All of these MAF sensors broke for the exact same reason. This fake MAF sensor is terrible for your vehicle. We're going to show you why. We got the graphs, we got the spreadsheets, and we got whatever the hell these things are, which we'll talk about in a bit. The results are nothing short of shocking. No one has covered this topic in this much detail. In fact, there is a lot of misinformation around this. And you'll be in for a big surprise when we pull these sensors apart. Finally, we'll settle the debate as to whether or not these things can even be cleaned and whether or not products like this one are a waste of money. This all started one day when I was on eBay. I went to purchase a fake mass airflow sensor, thinking I could save some money. But when it arrived, well, let's just say I was in for a surprise on the way it was built. All right, this video is not about replacing these sensors, but just so we're all on the same page, the mass airflow sensor sits right on top of the engine and it is incredibly easy to replace. As you can see, one screw here, one screw underneath, and a hose clamp right there. That's all you need. It pops right off. It looks like this. You should replace these on your own, by the way. Don't pay someone else to do it for you. Now remember, all this sensor does is measure the amount of air going into your engine. This sounds simple, but it's really important to be accurate because, you know, your engine decides how much fuel to add based on the amount of air it thinks it's receiving. So having an accurate measurement of this is really important for engine health. So we know accuracy is important. Well, here's a graph comparing various fake mass airflow sensors against an original Bosch. Now, as you can see, this graph paints a pretty abysmal picture on the accuracies of these fake sensors. But if you followed this channel long enough, you know for a fact that I'm not gonna trust some graph on some website that exists to sell real sensors. Cause you know, hey, I like to save money. So I'm gonna do my own test. Okay, so simply put, I installed an original mass airflow sensor, ran it through some RPMs, 1500, 2500, 3000, etc. And I did the exact same thing with a fake one. Here are some of the results. Now, don't worry about interpreting this graph. I have it all on a nice little spreadsheet, which I'll share in just a minute. So here we go. Okay, this was the recording of the original. So I found it at idle. So this was the flow at idle. Almost all engines sit just under 700 RPMs. So we measured it at idle. We'll skip ahead a bit. It took a while for me to um, have it settle at 1500 RPMs. Once it did, we got a pretty good reading here of about 37 grams per second. And again, don't don't worry about the numbers too much. I'm just kind of showing you how it was done here. We pull, pushed up to 2000, tried to level it off. All right, so we found it. We got it sitting perfectly at 2000 RPMs. We measured about um, 57 grams. Again, that's in the spreadsheet, all 58. We aver I averaged it out, pushed it up to 2500 again, and averaged it out. Let's see, right around there. There, that's 2,500. We got about 76. Uh, threw it on the spreadsheet one more time. And then we took it up to 3,000 at the end. So, okay, that was the methodology. Pretty concise, pretty straightforward. When we move on to our spreadsheet, well, the results really do speak for themselves, and they really are quite shocking. Again, we have RPMs. This is the flow rate of the fake sensor. <laughs> this is the flow rate of the original. This is the percentage difference. So as you can see, not only is it inaccurate, but the inaccuracy seems to sort of build up when under full load, it seems to be exceptionally inaccurate in these cases. This is pretty shocking. And of course, this is going to affect your acceleration with a fake mass airflow sensor of this kind. I suspect you get far worse acceleration just because it's not reading the airflow right. Now, 
Does this mean, hey, case closed, go buy original sensor and stay away from fakes? Well, yes, it does mean that, but it also begs the question, why? Why are these sensors so inaccurate? I went ahead and pulled this sensor apart to prove this point and show you why these fake sensors are so inaccurate. This is the original sensor. You can see that tiny little piece right here. I'll point that out in a second. That's the original one and compare that with the fake one. Look at how different this one is. This original one is known as a hot film mass airflow sensor. You just steady the camera. That's it right there. That's the element that heats up. That's why it's known as hot film. I'm not going to get too much into how these work, but just know that this one's far more accurate and it's far more expensive to produce. Now compare that with the fake sensor. Look at this thing right here. Completely different. Two wires. Way more simple. Way cheaper. Ultimately, it's just a cheaper, crappier sensor. And that's why it's so inaccurate. Mercedes moved away from hot wire sensors to hot film sensors almost 30 years ago. Reason being, these hot film sensors are far, far more precise. At the end of the day, the fake one and the original ones don't even use the same technology. I really don't think most people realize that, especially on the forums, because there's so much misinformation and, and so many people arguing as to whether or not these things can be cleaned. Now, before I show you whether or not these things can be cleaned, it's important to note when you're purchasing a new sensor, it needs to be original and it needs to be new. Don't get a used one. These things only last maybe 150,000 miles or so. And they're really only good for maybe five, seven, eight years, depending on the environment. Anecdotally speaking, it seems like these tend to go bad in the summer when the weather is really hot, simply because the hot film needs to stay hotter than the air around it. And it needs that temperature difference in order to measure correctly. This product claims to be mass airflow sensor. It works a lot like brake cleaner, but it's a little less aggressive. It has less potential to destroy or damage your sensor. Um, it does use the same little straws that the brake cleaners use. Now, the problem is... Now the problem is this is the front of the sensor. The only way in is through these small little holes, which this thing doesn't fit through, okay? So you can't really go in through the front unless you make a hole or destroy it or try and gently cut this thing off. These things are incredibly tough to pull apart without destroying them, by the way. And it's designed by Mercedes for that reason, sort of a planned obsolescence, but I'm not going to rant about that too much here. Um, might do it later. Who knows? So, okay, we're going to, we're going to show you what the actual sensor looks like. All right. So that's the front. If you were to get the straw in through here, it would come in through the front and, you know, with enough pressure, yeah, maybe you could uh, maybe you could clean it. It's not really, it's kind of, although you can't really see it right, it's kind of, um, there's definitely a depth to it, right? So the chances of the spray just rolling right over it is pretty high. But we can't go through the front anyway. So we kind of have to go in um, from the other side. All right. So this is what the back looks like. Plenty of room to go in. However, the back of the sensor when it's installed, back of the sensor when it's installed is here. So we kind of have to finesse, it's not impossible, but we kind of have to finesse it, uh, the cleaner to go in through this way. So, okay, you're spraying that cleaner, it's coming out strong with a lot of speed and force, but it has to go all the way up and through and somehow clean the inside here. I just don't see this happening. We're gonna test it a little bit right now, but 
ultimately this doesn't sound like something that's going to work. I'm going to take this primer and we're just going to pretend like this is dirt. So we're going to simulate a dirty sensor here. Yes, I am an idiot for spraying primer in my living room, but okay. A little squirt. And the sensor is appropriately dirty. All right, so we have the dirty sensor. Now we're gonna attempt to spray it. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna, just gonna pretend like this sensor is still intact with the cover over it. Um, this cover is removed. There's usually plastic here. And we're gonna pretend like we're going in through here. Right? Let's pretend like we can actually get this thing through. You're probably not going to be able to get that far, but uh, we're giving everything the benefit of the doubt here. So, okay. You somehow managed, best, this is the best case scenario here, you somehow managed to get everything in place. And you're going to spray, I'm using brake cleaner. If, if anything, this will be more destructive and have a higher chance of cleaning it than the math sensor. So, okay, we'll spray some. Whoa. I'm getting my entire desk wet here. Things I do for YouTube. Okay, I think that's enough. Moment of truth here. Um, yeah, we got some of the paint off. Not super conclusive. Of course, wet primer isn't the same as really tiny, sticky dust particles. Um, now, here's the kicker, right? <clears throat> Even though if you do somehow manage to finagle your cleaner hose in through this. You flush the entire thing with cleaner. Um, there's still people out there on the forums that will tell you, hey, we compared a hot film. We compared this sensor under a microscope before and after cleaning, and the one after shows damage. And this, this is with the real cleaning products here. This isn't, you know, uh, this, this isn't, um, this isn't the brake cleaner that I used. So ultimately, this call this an opinion or whatnot, but you know, I wouldn't waste money cleaning these. Now, notice here the fake sensor is built completely different, of course. And here, I'm gonna try and get it close here. Look at all that room you have. You can absolutely clean these fake ones and it will help make them run better. Of course, even a brand new fake one is gonna run terribly, so you know, you, you still don't wanna use one. I'd probably argue having that sensor unplugged is better than using a fake sensor, but that's just my, that's just my two cents right there, all right? But they can be cleaned, and I think that's, um, I think that's where some of the arguments come in in the forums. Some people are adamant about cleaning them. Some people are saying, no, you know, you can't do it. Well, it's very possible that some people don't realize that these fake ones use an entirely different sensor type. At the end of the day, don't waste your money on products like these. Buy new, buy original, and don't clean. Now I've shown you how to pick the right sensor and how to spot a fake sensor. But when it comes to van maintenance, there are things more important than sensors. So if you want to know some common mistakes people make when trying to maintain their sprinter, watch this video up next.